Now, while I was there, and in fact, one of the reasons why I'd been keeping track of the BBC News is because about half of the people who were there at the at this kind of annual get together party are from Scotland and the UK. And they were telling me about this guy in the UK who was completely off my radar because he's got no coverage whatsoever here in the United States by the name of Jeremy Corbyn. And and how he is a vegetarian and how he is a teetotaler and how he's 66 years old and he's been in politics for 30 years or so and he is a democratic socialist, although the newspapers refer to refer to him as a socialist. They refuse to call him a democratic socialist, even though that's what he calls himself. And how uh, one of the things he wants to do is renationalize the railroads. Railroads, uh, Margaret Thatcher sold them off to private corporations and everybody, you know, we got in a long conversation over dinner about how these private corporations are just screwing up everything that they've that they've uh, privatized because you got to make a buck off it right so they run it cheap and they and they cut people's pay and they do away with pensions and 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 you know it's just it's a disaster and he's like we'll read we'll re nationalize the railroads and they were very skeptical that he had any chance of winning as the head of the labor party now labor party that's tony blair's party I mean, the two big parties are the labor and the conservatives. And in fact, if you're a member of a union in Great Britain, my understanding is, and I'm, I'm no expert on British politics, and if you know much about this at all, feel free to call and, uh, and help educate me, because I'm just kind of slowly learning about this. But apparently, um, they put together this program. In fact, it was Blair's people who put it together so that they could more easily kind of control the labor party. That if you, uh, you know, here, if you want to vote in a Democratic primary, in a closed primary state, you have to register as a Democrat. Well, there, in order to register as a member of labor, uh, anybody could do it for three pounds, about four and a half dollars. Uh, that would be illegal here. It would be considered a poll tax, I suppose, except that this wasn't for a national election. This was for a party election. But basically, the, the, you know, the conservatives are the party in power. The labor is the party that's out of power. So when I, so, and, and they were, you know, everybody was talking about Corbin and what a cool guy, you know, and he, he wears t-shirts and blue jeans and he's just in the last couple of weeks started wearing a sports coat every now and then because, you know, he's starting to get respectable and people are paying attention to him. And uh, it was uh, Sunday afternoon, or Sunday morning, 1115 Sunday morning. And I came down to the, uh, down to the lunchroom and down in the guest house and everybody was hanging out there, having coffee, waiting for lunch. And I had just gotten the results on the BBC on my, on my phone, right? And I said, uh, Corbin won. And, and it was like, wow, yeah. And I said, by 59% of the vote. And, and literally half the people in the room, all of the, all of the you know, Ang Anglo, the, the, the folks from, from Great Britain, jumped up and were applauding and cheering. And it was like, he got 59% of the vote. The next, the next closest was 19, then 17, then 11, as I recall. I'm doing this in memory. This is a guy who a month ago nobody even took seriously. He's now the leader of the Labour Party in the, in the United Kingdom. And as such, he can put together what's called a shadow cabinet. In other words, he, he will appoint for all of the, the cabinet positions in the, in the regular government, he will appoint somebody who is in parliament who, if he becomes the guy who's in charge, they will be the one in charge. Can you imagine, I mean, if we did this here, if during the Bush administration... Uh, Harry Reid or Nancy Pelosi had appointed a shadow d d d secretary of defense, a shadow secretary of the treasury, a shadow secretary of, uh, you know, energy. And they put forward their positions and said, here's what we do. And here's why we oppose what the other party, I mean, it's such a cool thing. Well, Jeremy Corbyn is now the leader of the, of the labor party in the UK. And, and it's like, everybody there was saying to me, He's our Bernie Sanders, and they all know about Bernie, by the way. Bernie's getting a lot of, a lot of coverage, at least in the UK, and, I, you know, and, and some coverage in Europe. I also want to get into the whole refugee thing. I, I saw some of these refugees or, or uh, immigrants, depending on your... It's, it's become political what you call them and what's going on in Europe, and I want to, I want to share that with you, too. But we're seeing the same, you know, I, I think that we are here seeing this Jeremy Corbyn phenomena with Bernie Sanders. Bernie's now beating Hillary in Iowa. He's beating her in, in New Hampshire. And, uh, you know, he's speaking at Liberty University. 
this afternoon. This is the Tom Hartman Program. And this is what Bernie has always done best, is speak respectfully to the people who disagree with him and say, how can we, how can we join together? This is how he got a bill passed with John McCain last year. 